Happy Monday, everyone. Hope you've had a good long weekend. It's a blustery Monday here in Kimberly, but I am going to attempt once again to talk about composition. I had serious technical issues last week because I was attempting to do a screen share, which did not work. So I am going to do the old fashioned way and I'm going to actually just show you a photograph and hopefully that will, uh, yeah, work a bit better for us today because it's really hard to talk about composition without actually looking at paintings. So first of all, have a little peek at my new commission that I just finished on my easel there. There's that this weekend of Italy. It was a lot of fun and the owner is quite happy with it. Very, very happy, pleased with her memories of that. So um, yeah, that was a fun composition because it has foreground, middle ground and background is quite dramatically different. All important things to think about when doing your composition. Now, this is the painting I wanted to show, screen share with you last week. Now, this one has a great story to it. And the deal is when I was painting this one years ago, my mentor Karen came in for a visit and she loved the composition, but she wanted me to add a half a paint stroke. Can you get it? A half a stroke. My students, um, tease me because I always tell them that the magic is in the final stroke at the end of the painting. Just one stroke here and one stroke there and it can transform the whole thing. Well, this is where I learned that. And we're getting a bit of glare. There we go. A bit of glare, but I think you can see it. If you can't, let me know in the chat. But can you guess where the stroke is? that Karen taught, it was like right there. That's the one. Imagine this painting without that little dot of white, because you see the water takes you in here, connects to that little dot, takes you up into the snow pattern, up into here, up into there, and up into this snow pattern, and you get your focal point right there. So take a look on my website or on my Facebook post for a close up view of that where it's not me holding it. We're not technically perfect here today, but it's better than uh, what I tried doing last week. I'm used to working with screen share in Zoom and that is so much more interactive and user friendly, but we're dealing with Facebook today. So check it out. See if you can see what a difference that one stroke would make. Now let me tell you why. Because of the location of my focal point up here in this mountain, up in here, this is where I want the viewer to eye to lead, right? And the thing that about why I love composition is because we get to control where a person looks. An artist has that capability, they have that power. If done correctly, your composition will stop people in their tracks and they will stay and look at your painting and they won't even know why. And their eyes will go to that focal point and they won't know why. But because the creators have a good foundation uh, in composition, line, value, shape and color, all those things come together, help you to develop your focal point. And I have had students ask me, well, where is the focal point in uh, How do you know what it is, what the focal point is going to be? And you as the creator get to choose that. But the trick is you have to make that decision ahead of time. You can't get halfway through your painting and then say, oh, I don't know where my focal point is. I better figure that out. No, you start your canvas knowing and you can put it into multiple different places. If this rock 
in the foreground. If that's going to be your focal point, then you make that your focal point and all, all roads lead to Rome, all ro roads lead to the focal point. So, or maybe you want it to be these trees are going to be your exciting thing. Then you zing them up. I did not want the trees to be my focal point. So they're kind of dark and there is a lot of color in those trees, but it's not the drama. The, the drama in the painting is where your focal point is going to be. It's going to be the most exciting spot on the whole canvas. It's going to be what really sings. Whatever is your focal point, you put light against dark around it. You put it really hard edged. You don't make it soft and, and dreamy. See, in my Italy painting behind me, the water, it was really important for me to have water in this scene, the ocean, the Mediterranean uh, vibes and everything, but I didn't want the ocean to be the focal point. So I kind of laid it back. It's blue in color and soft edged around the sky. The sky is soft, so it's not going to be the first thing that attracts your eye. And you get to pick whatever it is you want the focal point to be. Some paintings, it's really obvious because sometimes if you're doing a painting of Mount Rundle, that wicked mountain peak on Rundle is probably going to be what attracted you to that scene in the first place. But not necessarily. You can change that. But, you know, there are, if you're doing a painting of Fisher Peak, I think Fisher Peak should probably be your focal point, but not necessarily. There are no rules. Um, the rules that there are in composition is you want to avoid the very center of your canvas. Because the center is like a bullseye and the way our eyes, the optics work, our eyes will automatically be drawn to the very dead center bullseye of a canvas and they will also be attracted to the edges. So you want to control the laws of optics and make somebody's eyes go somewhere else. And if you do that, it will be a good painting, okay? So just think about the edges of the canvas. Think about this very smack dab center. You don't want your, your horizon line in the middle. If you're doing a tree, don't put it smack dab in the middle. If your tree branches are, you don't want them all ending in the middle. You want to avoid the center. You want all four corners of your canvas to be different. All of these little things are tricks of the trade. You want to have interesting shapes. I also pulled up this photograph. And it's just of the my garden. And I like it because there's a lot of interesting shapes and colors and lines. And I just think it's really really cool the different things in it so just yeah have fun with things what do you think of that composition what should the focal point be you can pick a million things there are different spots all through this that's got can be a focal point I love that I love choosing and the the, the focal point will be hard edged it will be light against dark it will also have um, the dramatic color all these rules of, of fine art, fundamentals of fine art that I've spoken about, all come into play when you're doing composition. Every stroke contributes to one or the other things. And um, if you want more in-depth discussion on composition, I put a link under the video for my online art lecture. It's one hour long and it can be purchased on my website. So I put that in and I go into a lot of detail and I actually talk about this River Runs Through It paint, painting again in there. And I talk about that one stroke and tell that story because that's one of my favorite stories. And I think it really talks about the power of composition, the power of a single stroke and how, yeah, the, the importance of guiding the eye into the painting and holding the eye there. You also have to give the, play, the eye a place to rest at certain times. So just keep those things in mind. 
And composition is also very, very important for abstract paintings too. They have to have a focal point and compositionally, they have to have four corners different. They avoid the center. All those things are important. It doesn't even matter if you are painting an actual mountain scene, a still life, whatever it takes. You just have to consider all these items. And there are books and books and books written on composition. But again, if you want a little bit more of my spiel, if you're getting what anything from this, please do join up for my online lecture. That will then be emailed to you. Um, have a great week. And next week, I will talk more about uh, the fundamentals of fine art, a different one. I hope this answered some of your questions because I had a lady ask me last week for more in-depth uh, discussion on these fundamentals. So that's composition for you for this week. All right, have a good week. And I will talk to you same place, same time next week. Bye for now.